Well, we'll get started. Um, hello, everyone. I want to start off by saying thank you for coming. Um, thank you to all the panelists for coming. Uh, hey, Albert just joined. Hey, Albert. Um, if you wouldn't mind, could you just change your name to Albert and then Bain? That would be great. All right. So if you do not know me, um, my name is Jake Zaslow. I'm the president of the Corporate Strategy Club. Um, thank you so much for coming to our Big Three, Big Four panel. We have an awesome panel of speakers here, all different age ranges from uh, juniors all the way through people that are out of college. And um, Will and I will be moderating. Will's going to introduce himself in a second. He's the vice president. But I'm um, very excited for this evening, and I hope you guys are in for a show. So, Will, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, everyone. My name is Will, and as Jake said, uh, I'm the vice president. I just want to thank the panelists and uh, the people in the club for coming here. And I think an event like this just attests to how the Kelly community uh, looks out for each other. And I'm excited uh, to see what everyone has to say tonight. Awesome. So if you have questions, um, Will and I will be answering those in the chat as well, um, but we'll have plenty of time to ask questions in breakout rooms. But let's start with some panelists introductions. So I will ask each panelist for their firm, their hometown, their IU major, their favorite experience at IU, and a fun fact. Uh, I sent these to them before, so they hopefully they have them planned, they're not stuck. But I'll start with Albert. So you know, meet yourself and introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Albert Laval, uh, hometown. I'm from uh, Western suburbs of Chicago, like I'm sure a lot of you. I uh, majored in finance at IU, was um, in Phi Sci with Jake. I'm trying to think of, of a fun fact about me. Um, I guess my two younger siblings also go to IU, so uh, runs in the family. Did I, did I miss any other Jake? What was your favorite experience at IU? I think I already know it though. Favorite experience at IU, that's um, that's a tough one. I, uh, I think there's a lot of good ones to come. Good good basketball team, good football team. So hopefully uh, some good victories there. But I'd say when we moved back into the house, that was, uh, that was a very good day. Awesome. Thanks, Albert. Um, let's go to Ronak. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Ronak Patel. Next fall, I'll be working for McKinsey in their Chicago office. I'm actually originally from the Chicago suburbs. Uh, Palatine Barrington, if everyone's from that area. Uh, at IU, I'm a finance and operations management major. Um, my favorite experience at IU, um, I thought when Jake said, Albert, I think I know what this was. I thought he was about to say Little 500, but well, Albert was a rider and did a lot more than I did. I enjoy watching Little 500 and cheering on some of my friends. Um, and a fun fact about me is that uh, I studied abroad in Copenhagen for a summer, so that was fun. Awesome. Thanks, Renek. That was exactly what I thought Albert was going to say about Little 500, actually. Um, all right, let's move to Matthew of BCG. Yeah, so I'll be the third person to think that Albert was going to talk about Little 5. <laughs> but I'm Matthew I'm from Fishers, Indiana, doing econ consulting here. I'll be in the Chicago office um, after school. I would say my, my favorite memory, memory, actually, was this semester starting to produce root music with my roommate. Um, that's been a lot of fun. And as far as a fun fact, my grandparents on well, my dad's side are from Reunion Island, this little volcanic island right by Madagascar. So it's a lot of fun to, to get to visit. Awesome. All right. Um, I'm not sure if Kevin's here, actually. He's the Deloitte um, representative. But let's move on to Brogan. Yeah, hi. I'm Brogan. Um, I'm also working this fall at EY. So I'm in the same class as Ronick. I'm from Naples, Florida, so I don't know if anyone is from the South, but it's always nice to meet other Florida people here in Indiana. I'm just an operations management major, so a little bit less impressive than everyone that has like three or four majors in Kelly, um, but I'm also a Spanish minor, so I think that's the cool thing that I have. Um, my favorite experience at IU was probably living with my best friends last year. It was just really fun to um, have a whole year with them and then start quarantining with them. I feel like we really solidified our friendship those last couple months of um, junior year for me. And a fun fact is that I have a natural streak of white hair. That's the only like cool thing I can think of off the top of my head. So that's I have that too. Oh, that's awesome. It's weird. It's like it's one or two strands and I have no idea where it comes from. Oh, I have like a whole chunk of hair, but it's like in the back. So you usually can't see it. <laughs> oh yeah. Mine blends too, but, you know. Let's move on to Ujwal. Hey everyone, I'm Ujwal. I'm going to be interning at PwC this summer. I'm a junior and I'm from New Delhi, India. 
My majors are finance, operations management, and business analytics. Favorite experience at IU was, I was going to say a little 500, but I, I think we've had that, our fair share of that by now. And so my second best is definitely volunteering around the Bloomington community. Started doing that freshman year. I'm still involved doing that. And my fun fact is that I can solve a Rubik's Cube in under one minute. Awesome. And um, last but not least, Dan at KPMG. Hi, my name is Dan Mayer. I'll be an associate uh, at KPMG in their deal advisory and strategy practice this fall. Uh, uh, my hometown was, uh, it, I'm from Barrington, Illinois. Uh, my major is accounting and finance, and then I'm in the 3-2 MBA program, and that concentration is financial analysis. Um, my favorite experience at IU, I'm going to triple down with the little five take uh, and throw it back to, since I'm a fifth year, um, uh, and it, since I'm a fifth year, I'm going to say my freshman and sophomore year little five experiences with my fraternity just are like a really different time before the pandemic and all of that. And uh, then the last thing, my fun fact would be I played in the all campus orchestra for two years uh, before starting my MBA program. I played the violin. Really, really awesome experience. It's great. Um, so I'm not sure if Kevin's going to make it. So he may have, have a perfect fill. Actually, Cole, uh, one of our advisors in the club, actually is going to Deloitte. So I guess, Cole, if you want to introduce yourself. and I can sub, yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm Cole. I'm going to Deloitte. I'm going to be in their tech group. Um, favorite menu from IU. I don't know if it's like one single one, but just like, I guess my friends had like a, a Wii Sports boxing tournament that I did win once. And um, so basically just a lot of yelling at the TV and watching sports and playing, uh, you know, Wii Sports. Kind of a running thing. But, yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, great. Then the next thing we'll move on to is moderator questions. So we have four planned questions for you guys. Um, we'll go in the same order that we just did so we can not uh, overlap or confuse ourselves. So the first question that we wanna ask is what attracted you to the firm that you are going to or are interning with or are already working at. So we'll start with Albert. Sure. Uh, for me, honestly, I, I remember um, there was a, a Bain Info session sophomore year and really didn't know a ton about consulting, but um, figured I, I'd go and see what it was about. And it was really like before and after the session that, that kind of attracted me to Bain and just seeing how um, the group that, that came to IU they all really seem to know each other, even though like they weren't working on the same project and just kind of hearing what they were talking about. It wasn't solely work. So for me that um, those are both, you know, really good selling points and then learning more about the work as well as um, some of the cool things that people do while they're at Bain, as well as after they leave Bain, uh, that, that kind of rounded out the picture for me. Great. All right. Uh, Ronek. Uh, definitely. So also, I guess, an info session, but um, apart from all the info sessions that McKinsey brought to IU, I think the one that stuck out to me was through the consulting workshop. We were actually able to visit the firm uh, before COVID hit my uh, junior year, first semester. And I think that really helped me um, decide, like, I could see myself working here one day. Um, so I guess a little free tip, if you know, I guess, anyone in, in the non-COVID world, you're able to visit the office and maybe um, see what the like environment work culture there is like uh, if someone that you know at the office can show you around that might be a big factor in maybe helping decide if you can see yourself working there one point so I think that was a pretty big uh, deciding factor for myself that's a great point um, Matthew yeah I had the chance to intern with BCG and I think it was just seeing the way that people kind of looked out for each other outside of the office in my particular situation um, I was like in this crazy accident at the end of the summer and seeing the way that the entire office, even people I didn't know so well, kind of rallied around it uh, was a big selling factor for, for joining. Cool. Um, uh, we'll, let Cole, we'll let Cole go next because Deloitte's up next. Go ahead, Cole. So um, I think a lot of you guys know that I was on the uh, corporate strategy team at Royal Caribbean. After COVID hit, I was kind of looking for, you know, somewhere to go that had a lot of variety. I think Deloitte's really good at, you know, you could start at Deloitte doing anything and you can completely like pivot your career and do anything else after that. So I would definitely say it's, it's the variety of Deloitte and just the sheer amount of like, different business units like all over the country and the world. So, yeah. 
Nice. Um, Rogan. Yeah, so I actually, I kind of interviewed everywhere my junior year for an internship. And for EY, it's kind of like a super day. Um, there's like a bunch of interviews that you have all throughout the day. And one of the interviews I had, I had with um, a senior director. So he was pretty high up in EY, but he didn't like come out and say that he was a senior director. But you could just like tell when there's like an older guy coming in and interviewing you. Um, and he was honestly like one of the nicest people I've ever met. He gave me his email and phone number after the interview was over. And we're just like, if you ever need anything, like, please email me. Um, he helped me like find what part of EY I wanted to be into. And if I ever wanted to move, he's like, oh, just call me. Like, we'll figure it out. Um, wherever you want to be, we'll put you. And I've never felt like so comfortable and supported in like an interview process where they're like clearly like picking you between other candidates. And regardless of I ended up interning with them, so it all worked out well, but regardless of the outcome, he was really excited to just get to know me and support me in whatever my future professional aspirations were. So I really felt like I was at home with them even before I started working for them. Great. Uh, usual. My interest in PwC started with um, one of my friends going there uh, to intern in his junior year. I was just a sophomore then and then so I decided to go to some of the info sessions, get to know some people. And then I found myself interviewing for um, a summer internship role at PwC. And so as soon as I apply, they call, I get a call back for an interview. And then in an email, they connect me with four different people from IU just to, you know, so that I can get accustomed to the firm and the people there. And then talking to those people, I felt that sense of community and then that connection with IU and the people I was gonna be working with which was a big thing for me, just, just that feeling of connection. And so I decided that I wanted to move forward in the process and then, you know, join PwC for my internship this summer. Awesome. And Dan. Yeah, I really valued the flexibility that KPMG offered me. Um, there's a lot of, I mean, there's many rotation opportunities within the practice, but um, even if you don't have an accounting and finance background at a big four firm, uh, the amount of flexibility that KPMG offers to pivot to maybe some other areas, if you're transparent about that, uh, whether that may, be me, that may be in management consulting or maybe you just want to pivot locationally, uh, was a really good opportunity or offering that uh, they were able to um, talk about and sit, have on the table. Another piece was the, the people aspect that everyone else is bringing up. Everyone's just so friendly uh, and inviting um, and uh, basically able to show what opportunities KPMG can offer and seeing that tied in with also that they have a private equity focus with their service offerings really attracted me to the firm. Great. All right. Well, the next question we move on to is what role did networking play in landing your job? Um, this is a very important question, I think, for all ages, especially uh, sophomores and juniors. And it really applies to any age because uh, networking is key in anything, in my opinion. So we'll start with Albert. Um, what role did networking play in landing your job? Absolutely. Well, I think um, th there's two factors here. It's just broadly um, networking helps you understand like what field you want to go into as well as like what firm's a good cultural fit. But as far as Bain specifically, it's not a huge element of the um, application process. It it's really just for the, the benefit of you as, as you're learning about the firm to know if it's the right fit. That said, though, that, that's going to vary by firm, and I'll let uh, the others speak to um, the role plays in their process. Great. Um, Ronak? Yeah, so for McKinsey, I think networking, I guess similar to Albert's situation, doesn't really help much with the recruitment process itself in terms of, like, will you get an interview if you network hard, or uh, will you get an offer if you network hard? Uh, for example, my personal experience, my junior year, I had um, one of my family friends who was, uh, his parents were the CEO of a Fortune 100 company. They sent my resume to McKinsey's partner's desk and I didn't even get an interview. So got straight the rejection like email like a week later. Um, so that just shows that like, it doesn't matter who you kind of reach out to. You can know as many partners as you want at McKinsey specifically, and it won't really help uh, with, uh, I guess, receiving an interview. But where it does help is if you're working with people that might be two or three years out of college at those firms, um, those could be people that could help you case prep. Um, they can give you an insight on how uh, working at that firm is for someone that's in their uh, young 20s. So that's definitely something that I would like differentiate where if, if you think you were not working really hard, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you'll land an interview at at least my firm and maybe a few others. Matthew. 
Yeah, like going run at Gmabbard's points. Um, at BCG, I don't really think networking is a substantial point. However, I think it still has value. And like Albert was saying, understanding the cultures at different firms and seeing where you might be a fit. Um, so I, I would encourage you to talk to people at firms, but not because you think it'll help you get an interview because you want to learn about it. Cool. Okay, so I was in a little bit of a weird situation where I did not network at all for Deloitte. I just, you know, submitted the application and then I got the interview and well, I got the job then. But I will tell you that, especially from my friends, um, Ronak, I think you know Francie Himes. Um, she would tell you that networking was super important for getting her job. I think she was networking for it for like, since like sophomore year or something. But um, networking at Deloitte in general is very, very important. The fact that I got the job and didn't network at all was kind of um, unique, but I do know that it's it's definitely helped me helping me for um, like follow up post offers and stuff. So, yeah, it's definitely helpful. Program. Yeah, definitely. So, um, not that I have a whole lot to add on top of what people have said previously, but uh, one thing that's really important is once you are in the consulting field, is networking within your own company. So one thing that I was really focused on is I didn't know where I wanted to start, like what kind of consulting I wanted to be in. So I actually applied for two different programs. I applied for their supply chain consulting practice and their strategy consulting practice. Um, and after my internship, I got to have a project in both. I was really lucky how fortunate that worked out. Um, but then I was able to network with different partners that were on my team, directors, who my senior manager was, to figure out where I wanted to finally be placed. So I feel like networking really doesn't stop once you get the job. Um, it's really important in consulting in particular that you keep in touch with all of those higher level management people because then you can find your right fit in the firm once you understand where your interests and skills better align. Awesome. Um, Ujual. As, as everyone outlined, networking helps you get more information about a company, about the role you're gonna be working in. It's like kind of getting your foot into the door. And then it's when you start, once you start interviewing with the firm and getting to know more about them, it's more based on your technical ability. That's what happened when I was interview, interviewing with PwC. In my first few interviews, it was more focused on the skills that I was bringing to the firm, my own interest in, in, the, in the field I was gonna be working in the department. And then later on, when I, I was in my final stages of the interview with, with the partner, that's when more of the networking and connecting with people came in for me. So it was much later in the process. First was my skill and then networking, I would say. And Dan. Yeah, I would have to say networking in the middle of the process for at least KPMG is really important. So like everyone else said, uh, up front, getting the interview more for you, uh, but having those attractive uh, uh, characteristics as an applicant uh, will kind of put yourself more in a, a better opportunity to have an interview. Um, but the way the process is for KPMG, uh, definitely reaching out to those who might end up entering, interviewing you, they're transparent about who those people are. Uh, and then those people within the practice, after you know you might have that first round interview uh, is really, really important from a networking perspective. All right, uh, so the next question that we're gonna have, I'm sure that a lot of people on this call wanna be in the panel shoes in a couple of years, uh, going back to when you were a freshman, sophomore, or even junior, like what steps would you take to ensure that you have success? And uh, Albert, we could start with you again. Albert, I think you're muted. Sorry, guys. Uh, I think the biggest thing is to um, take advantage of the moment you're in now and focus on what you can control. So if you're an underclassman, it's really like focusing on getting good grades, getting the most out of your classes, because as you'll find out, they really do build on each other. Um, but getting into like junior year, senior year, it's focusing on like within whatever you're involved in, whatever you're passionate about, trying to have a leadership position to, to show ownership. And um, I, I think that's the way you can make the most of, of the situation. So 
if you're a freshman or sophomore, I wouldn't necessarily be worrying about interview prep a ton right now. It's just exploring your options. Uh, yeah, so I guess for freshmen and sophomores, I right now just enjoy college. Uh, I always say being at IU and being college is probably the best four years of my life. Um, so don't worry about stressing over interviews or like all these informational networking calls. As a freshman, sophomore, focus on school, keeping your grades up and honestly finding organizations that you're passionate about and want to be in and then try to go for and set yourself up to have a leadership role as a junior or senior. Because when it comes time to applying for internships or applying for jobs, the GPA will always be the right, there'll be a little cutoff, but what's going to help candidates stand out are their leadership roles and what they do on campus, what their involvements are and what organizations are they making a true, like a true impact on, right? More than just being a regular member for a bunch of clubs, find like two or three clubs that you can have an impact on and be a leader. And um, so that's what I always stress to freshmen and sophomore is, sophomores are is just set themselves up so that when they're junior or senior, they can go for that leadership role. Um, and then just when it comes time to prep for interviews, just do your due diligence and reach out to who you think is, um, I guess, someone that's approachable for you. Yeah, I would echo that and add on that. Um, reaching out to, to upperclassmen um, and people who are early in the working force ha was really helpful to me freshman and sophomore year. Uh, people I met just doing like informational interviews and, and learning about their daily lives are people that I still keep in touch with and that still speak into my life and, and provide advice now. Um, and so I think that was particularly helpful, just making friends uh, and, and hearing about different perspectives from, from seniors and, and people who have started working. Cole? Um, yeah, I think I want to echo some of what Albert said. I think that you guys should definitely just focus on, you know, doing well in school and doing all like those, you know, hitting those core things. But I think beyond that, um, especially with Deloitte and a lot of the other big four firms, a lot of the kids that, you know, go to those events and, and do all that stuff, they are, they're all kind of homogenous in the fact that they all do the same stuff. So I think that if you can kind of like develop an angle or some kind of unique um, value proposition, I think that that would be really good for trying to get, you know, an angle in those, in those interviews. Um, specifically, like for me, I think it was like my army experience and then my like background in like app development, I think helped a lot. Like they, that was pretty much the only things that I talked about in the interview. I'm um, trying to think back, but yeah, you know, just, just try to, especially for Deloitte, just try to set yourself apart from like the hundreds of kids that go to those events. And that is probably gonna, I, I assume that's probably helpful for literally every firm here. Yeah, just kind of building off those things. Um, definitely get to know people in your grade or the grade above or below you too. I feel really lucky that like I'm friends with a lot of these panelists and like have hung out with them and like social events and gotten to know them on a deeper level, even though like we're all going to different firms, you know, we're all kind of in the same industry and it's so nice to have that tight knit community and people that are doing different jobs, but working the same kind of job. Um, the other thing, definitely don't underestimate practicing case interviews. I totally echo everyone in saying like, enjoy your freshman and sophomore year. Um, it is really like heartbreaking when like one of your friends calls you junior year and is like, what's a case interview? I have an interview with XYZ firm tomorrow. Can you help me? Um, I, like, it's so hard to like teach someone in a short period of time. And I remember I went into my final interview with EY and a girl asked me in the hallway, like on the way to her interview, if I had like ever heard what a case interview was before. And it's like, oh no, like, so please like never think you're bothering anyone. Um, the IU community and the consulting community within IU is so close, like text someone, like text me, text Matthew, text whoever, just be like, hey, can we like do a practice one? Everyone's got to start somewhere. Um, and people did that for us. We want to do that for other people. So when the time comes, make sure that you give it its due diligence. Yeah, well, um, my advice is going to be more general. And I think freshman, sophomore year, just show up, show up to stuff, read your email, read your Kelly newsletters, see what's going on around campus, try to find organizations you might be interested in. Just go to one event, two events, just see what's going on, talk to people. And, you know, just making those friends will help you a lot later on. That's what helped me just getting that information. Sometimes not having enough information about what to do can be the problem and not just like you putting in the effort as Brogan just mentioned, like you might not even know what in case, what a case interview is if 
you're not connected to people who have been doing them or like who've gotten jobs through them. And so that's why, you know, just knowing people, talking to them and showing up to stuff is very important. I would say, um, I mean, I first want to echo the academic footing uh, part where just having yourself in a good academic, um, uh, at a good academic standpoint from everyone else, like having a, a strong GPA and good performance will just be really good for your confidence. And you really want to, wanting to put yourself out there because you feel like you have a good baseline of where you're at in college. However, one thing I want to touch base on is I completely agree, especially with bigger organizations, you might not be able to push for that leadership position until junior year or senior year. However, um, don't let that, um, I mean, make you distraught by any means. Something I want to uh, really harp on is presence, especially as we enter the new normal and we have more in-person events. Um, you really want to be present. And what I mean by that is when I was interviewing two um, individuals for leadership positions at my organization, my junior year, um, one person was telling me about all the all the places she was interviewing for in the leadership role she wanted to get uh, as a sophomore or junior, but it didn't really prove anything to me about her passion or commitment to the organization, nor had I really seen her at the meetings. While the other individual, um, now she didn't have a, a bunch of leadership involvement, but she had been to every single meeting that we had, and I knew that she had that commitment. So especially as you're able to come to more events, as long as you're comfortable, make sure you're making an active presence uh, by just being there. And trust me, everyone will really recognize that you've been there, especially the execs. Awesome. That's really great advice. So before uh, we go into breakout rooms, uh, we have one more question, which is, uh, would you guys be willing to share an unexpected interview question or maybe a funny interview anecdote from your experiences? Sure. So mine's actually... Um from a practice interview. My first uh, practice interview was actually with someone from Bain and it, it did not go very well. He, uh, he paused it halfway through and he's like, let's, let's just tackle this one together. Um, and it was really great feedback and all, but I remember thinking like, okay, I, I have a long way to go. And as Brogan pointed out, there, there is a steep learning curve with case interviews. So um, I, I don't know if that, that's funny or humbling, but just take, uh, take the feedback in stride and know that Literally everyone has been there um, and gotten some tough feedback on, on interviews, as well as when you get into your job, the, the feedback doesn't stop. So it's uh, being able to look at it with a, with a sense of humor. Uh, one thing I did want to add uh, onto what Dan said earlier is it, just the idea that there, there isn't any wrong involvement. Um, whatever you're passionate about, like in, in danger sounding cliche, like just pursue it and do it very well. It doesn't necessarily have to be consulting related or academic related. It's really just about, did you take ownership? Did you drive impact? Yeah, I guess one experience from my interview process that I remember um, wasn't, I guess, from the actual interview, I don't really remember much. I feel like it was probably because I did so many case interviews before that by the time the real interview came, it just felt like a blur and just make sure, like, I guess I executed and then move on. But I think during the practice portion of it, the summer leading up to that fall uh, recruitment cycle um, for senior year, I remember I did a practice case in like May, early May with one of my mentors, a grade above, and he pretty much just ripped me apart. And I said, be honest, be brutally honest. Like, I want to get better. He gave me like a huge sheet of just red paper all over it. Um, and then we got back uh, in August and he was still around and he gave me my, I guess my case, like a week before my actual interview. And I said, the week leading up to my interview, I didn't want to do any practice cases. I just wanted to focus on doing the interview that's coming up in a week from today. That last one, he said, remember, he kept, he brought back my feedback sheet um, for my first one in May and said, do you remember all these red marks that you had? And then he showed me what I had in August and said, you honestly didn't make any of these and don't have many mistakes. And that's when I knew I was like, all right, I think I got this. Gave me the confidence. He honestly could have been completely lying and just said like, look, you did perfect. Like now you're ready for this interview, go and do it. Um, but if you didn't, like, it just gave me so much confidence heading into my final interview that I made that much progress in three months. That's tight, Renick. Kind of going off of that point, um, I think getting reps in is, is pretty important. I, I've heard of some people just like, oh, my first case interview and they got the job. That's rare. I mean, it happens, but in general, like practicing is the move. Uh, personally, like I, 
kept a, a Google doc of every practice case I did and, and jotted down the feedback and was like really intentional about, okay, what are the reoccurring themes of things I'm, I'm not doing well and how do I improve on those? Um, as far as like uh, interesting interview aspect, for all my final rounds, um, they were real cases that the partners had done. So that was really fun to like geek out about them about what actually went down after after the case was over. Cool. Um, well, in terms of interviewing, um, my, my final round interview was kind of weird where I actually had a partner who was kind of um, eccentric a bit in the, uh, like at the pre-night. And then he ended up being my um, like final round interviewee. And then, you know, basically he had this case that he, that he wanted to run through. And then halfway through the case, um, he decided, you know, screw that. We're not going to do that at all. We're going to have a complete debate about like software development. And then he wanted me to give him like market advice, like pitch him some stocks that he had in his portfolio, which I thought was kind of interesting. It was kind of a weird interview, but like, and I felt really nervous because it wasn't going anywhere where I thought it would have been going, but you know, it went really well. Um, he seemed to like me, or I guess he hired me, so that's good. But um, yeah, I mean, really just be prepared for things to go in any given direction. I mean, because everything that I did for prepping for interviews, um, like I didn't really need any of it because they basically almost always wanted to talk about something different. So um, yeah, you know, prep, but you gotta be willing to be flexible because you don't know necessarily what they wanna talk about, what they wanna hear. And um, yeah, you just gotta be ready for that. Did I, is that the question? Just crazy interview? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, um, I guess kind of the only story that I have is about the same senior director that I mentioned earlier, but um, he gave me my case interview on that super day. So he was definitely one of my harder interviews, but we finished really early. I think we had like 45 minutes to do it. And we ended up finishing it in like 15 minutes. Like we just kind of powered through all the questions. And um, this question sounds rude, but I promise it wasn't. Like he was smiling um, at me and everything, but he like leaned back in his chair and he's like, so why are you doing this? Like just very like objectively, not like why are you doing consulting? Like, why are you looking for something in this industry? He's just like, so why are you doing this? Um, and I got really excited because I felt like that was such an open-ended question. I started listing off, oh, well, I want to do this and I want to travel. And this sounds interesting to me. And I don't know what this is. So I want to learn about it. And just kind of got to talk about all the different things that I liked. Um, and he, he just said back to me, yep, that would have been my same answer too, if I was your age again. Um, so it was like nice hearing kind of that relationship and the same like curiosity and eagerness of just, you know, going to the professional world and having endless opportunities of what kind of projects you want to explore, what kind of people you want to work with, where you want to travel to. Um, so that, that was just a really nice experience, but definitely a, a question that took me off guard, but in, in a good way. For me, um, in one of my interviews with PwC, it was supposed to be one of the shorter interviews. It was like 30 minutes long, but it was behavioral and I was expecting the whole, you know, the normal question that you get on teamwork, leadership and conflict resolution. And then we started with a teamwork question. And then after that, we had another one and another one. And in the end, we had like five or six just teamwork questions. And then I was basically expected to come up with situations where I had been a good team player for 30 minutes and just going through that star format and talking about my experience there. And then, so that was slightly unexpected. You like, you usually have like one or two great examples of when, you know, you did well as a team and you worked well in a team. And then that was slightly unexpected for me, but I think Kelly in general just prepares you a lot and puts you in those situations where you're working with a team that, you know, you can pull through from things that you've experienced in classes and projects outside of classes and I was able to do that and then finally I think I was able to do the interview well because I got the internship but yeah that was unexpected for me. So this one's really like lame and nerdy and it was a behavioral interview for actually uh, an FP&A financial planning analysis internship I had a year prior to my internship at KPMG. Um, I put on my resume and this is why it's lame when I was like 11 through 14. I don't know why I was really into coins. Like I went to coin shows and stuff. And there's a term for the study of coins known as numismatics. Uh, and I was like, oh, I'll just toss that on the resume. Um, like just to sound sophisticated. 
Um, Cause I can talk about it anyways, even though I'm not really involved in it anymore. And the interviewer hits me with the like, well, so what's your thoughts on crypto? What's your thoughts on Bitcoin and all that? And I'm like, I have no idea. So I just tweak out right there and then. And then he's like, well, you know, I saw you put this down here. Um, uh, like I, I just assumed it was that based on a Google search. And I'm like, no. And I gave him the whole rundown. And so I kind of got to throw a little fire at him for being like, hey, you kind of uh, didn't do enough due, due diligence because uh, this is what numismatics is all about. So kind of a weird question rattled me. Then I could rattle him. Really fun time. That's awesome. Thank you all for sharing those experiences. All right, so we have about 20 minutes left and we're going to move into breakout rooms. Um, I have them all signed and I'm gonna send a list of topics um, we should talk about in the breakout rooms. So if you wanna take a picture of this and I'm gonna open the breakout rooms. So we'll stand there for about probably five, 10 minutes and we'll come back for a quick wrap up Q&A and, &A and uh, we'll, we'll end it, all right. Yeah, I, I don't know if all those guys are in consulting workshop, but I think that they're probably, if you want to go to an MBB for many being a consulting workshop is either like, like a like necessary, completely like required or it's highly um, suggested. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope the breakout rooms went well. Um, so the last part of our meeting is going to be a general Q and A. We'll leave about five ish minutes for that. So we're actually going to open the floor now. And if anybody has any questions for any of the panelists, um, this is your time to ask your questions. One thing I was kind of curious about, I know I talked a little bit in my breakout room uh, about this, but um, one thing one thing I was really interested in is what was something um, for any of the panelists you wish you knew before going into like, uh, or before, before getting into like the consulting industry or before getting interested in it as well? I guess one thing I'd say is recruiting is a two-year game. Um, people say it, but then as a student, you might not believe it. I remember being a junior year, an intern, and going to like i every day, and I felt like every single day a new junior got an internship offer. Um, and like, of course, everyone's going to be happy for them. They're one of your peers. But then at the same time, you're like, dang, like I didn't get that interview or I didn't get an offer. Like, am I like screwed for senior year? Um, for myself personally, I remember I recruited at like six consulting firms my junior year for internships, and I only got an interview at one of them. Um, and then uh, senior year came along, and I remember that summer before I networked hard, I took advantage of my internship uh, with McDonald's corporate for my junior year. And then when senior year came along, all the six firms that rejected me junior year all of a sudden gave me interviews. Um, and then it was just a matter of like performing. So it, just because you get a no your junior year doesn't mean it's going to be a no senior year. And that's why I always say, keep preparing. Don't give up after junior year. Like if you really want to do consulting and it didn't work out, find a corporate strategy internship. Like IU has so many great relationships with like companies like Target, um, Whirlpool and Macy's. Like find something that um, is just a solid internship that you genuinely want to do. And then when senior year comes along, just take advantage of that and be prepared when the opportunity comes. Yeah, kind of going off Ronick's point, um, don't compare yourself to other people. Um, but always depend on your peers because they're going to be happy for you. Um, one big thing that people forget about is people are doing what's best for them. So that doesn't mean that that's also what's best for you. Um, like we had a couple of people in our workshop class. Um, I'm with Matthew and Ronick um, in our workshop class and people are going all over the place. We had a girl that ended up going into a wealth management position. So don't be like, oh, so-and-so got an interview here. I didn't get one. So-and-so got an offer here. I didn't get one because you could be so surprised about jobs or firms that you really like that you might've not given a chance in the beginning um, and find something that goes with your life values. You know, if like that's the kind of work you wanna do and that firm does it, go for it. That's so awesome. Um, if you wanna have like more of a work-life balance, go for a firm that's gonna be able to give you that. If you, you know, are really angsty and like wanna go and like work all the time and like make those bonds with those teams, that's really awesome too. And there's so many people like you that feel that way. Like rely on your friends to have those experiences, but don't compare yourself to other people. Do what's best for you. I would definitely echo that. And one of the benefits of work from home is I live with three other consultants who work at three other firms. And getting the chance to see like how similar the jobs are is honestly remarkable. Like it's it's the same type of type of issues, you know, similar team structures. Um, but also seeing too, it's like, man, you know, that that other firm is doing something that's really interesting. I hope 
our firm like implements, you know, a, a similar type of program or, or vice versa. But I think it once you have the benefit of, of not being in school and actually doing the job and being out there, you appreciate different aspects of it. And like what Brogan pointed out, you actually have to live with the job. It, it's not just something on the lo- your resume. It, it has to align with, with your passions and what you want to do. So um, definitely prioritize that as you go through and know whatever firm you end up at, there'll be an opportunity to find your people, find the types of projects that you want to be on. Yeah, um, kind of go off of that. I think that if you don't know what you want to do, I feel like in general consulting is a really good avenue for kind of figuring that out, especially because a lot of these firms do a lot of different things and you can really hop into anything as long as it doesn't require like a CPA or like a, a series seven per se. But, um, you know, when it comes to looking for jobs in general, just, you know, keep your you know eyes and ears open for, for new opportunities. You know, it's so easy to get focused on like what firms are at like that little table in the middle of Kelly, like right outside, like the A100 room, whatever that is. I forget that number by now. But um, yeah, you know, there's, there's so many jobs that have all kinds of different opportunities that just aren't advertised. So like keep looking, like for example, like the corporate strategy job that I had wasn't really advertised throughout IU a whole lot. In fact, there aren't really many corporate strategy jobs that hire um, freshmen or really undergrads. Sorry, I know you guys are freshmen. Um, but you, so you have to kind of look for those and they're few and far between, but when you find one, and you can get the interview, it allows you to kind of develop yourself. So yeah, definitely my best, the best opportunities that I had were not found at all through Kelly. They were just found through talking to people, having conversations, and then just remembering that like every job offer you get or every opportunity that you can receive in the future doesn't start with, hey, I'm looking to do X. It's, you know, hey, how are you? You know, tell me about what you do. You know, did you, did you see X basketball game last Friday? You know, it's like no, the best salesmen do not start with, hey, would you like to buy this product? It's, you know, hey, how are you doing today, more or less? So um, yeah, Kyle Zick and I talked about that this weekend. So yeah. Awesome. Does anybody have any more questions they'd like to ask? Um, I have a really quick one that I asked in my breakout room, but like, what do you guys consider as like a good GPA? Like, I feel like it's like different for each company. So. I think it really depends on the firm. Oh, sorry, Matthew. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, General guideline, I'd say opportunities generally will be easier. Not saying they'll be non-existent if you're below, but easier if you're above a 3.7. Um, that's kind of just the general range. I feel like people, you know, like you're in the clear, good job, you know, and they just kind of check the box and you're done. Um, usually for sophomore year recruiting, um, you have the opportunity to get an interview if you have above a 3.5. That's kind of the main cutoff. Um, and then senior year goes down to a 3.4. Um, again, I would try to stick around the 3.7 if you can. Um, that's kind of usually the general range, but it definitely depends on what firms you're looking at. Yeah, I'd agree with Brogan and just add not to worry about it too much. Um, Just try your best in classes and things will generally sort themselves out. All right. um, I was going to finish. I know like for Deloitte specifically, yeah, I think a lot of you guys know Tyler Atassi. I think he has like damn near a full plan now. He had his internship at Deloitte um, junior year. But I will say that specifically Deloitte strategy I do know kids that had as low as like a three, four that got the job offer, like a three, four, like one. So um, even if you're below the cutoff, I don't think it matters too much. It's really at that point, just how well do you network? So yeah, don't, don't fix it on GPA unless you maybe want to go to McKinsey, in which case it probably has to be spotless. But, you know, I guess Rona can probably comment on that. And I know Tyler's, it's probably spotless. You did not need a 4.0. I had a high. I had a very low 3.7. And extra, Seriously? Yeah, extra credit clears, clears will be more valuable than your GPA. I'll tell you that much right now. I learned something tonight. Okay. okay. Here we go. I think two organizations, I think, carried more weight than a 3 or a 4.0. So remember that. Generally, once you're in the interview room, that's, that's the, about the extent of the yeah. GPA mattering. Yeah. Like, once you're in the room, it, 
It's about what you can bring to the table, whether that's experiences, how you do in the case interview. Um, but I guess going back to something I said earlier, what can you control right now? GPA is probably one of those levers that are easy to pull. So um, definitely finish the semester strong and, and re really focus in on these last three weeks or so. Yeah, that's great advice. We have time for one more question if anybody wants to ask. Uh, I have a question. Oh, oh, please. No, you can go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, I asked this in my room, but I just wanted to ask the rest of you. Um, I know that a lot of Kelly kids have a lot of emphasis on going corporate immediately after they graduate, um, but that is not necessarily where they want to stay. I was just wondering if you guys have thoughts. Why, why did you decide to go corporate instead of something else? Is this your long-term goal? I'm just curious. So um, I guess, do you mean like why we may have gone like corporate, like internships and then went into consulting firms or like why we might maybe pursue corporate jobs later in the future? Uh, the second one. Okay. Um, so I think what a lot of consulting firms do is you're a consultant for a lot of large corporations or like Fortune 500 companies. And a lot of times what consultants end up doing is they might like work for, let's say three or four months on one project for one company. And then two or three years go by in the consulting firm and they either hit that point where they go get an MBA, um, they might either get promoted or they might go, they're sick and tired of maybe traveling Monday through Thursday and wanna settle down and like just have a regular nine to five job. And that's where like a large corporation might come in and they might pursue that role. Um, other people might go into like politics. A lot of ex senators and congressmen worked at consulting firms. A lot of like presidents of universities and even professors uh, Professor Rubin, for example, worked at a consulting firm before he came to IU. Uh, so there's a lot of um, options after consulting. I think that's why it's attractive a lot of students um, for a job right out of college. I had a corporate in uh, internship, and I kind of noticed that uh, those who are at like my firm had a lot more technical knowledge um, and more transferable skills, at least something they could obtain later on. I obviously, you can get that from the corporate life. Um, but I noticed there were just some technical skills that were really useful. Um, another thing that I noticed though, was like, uh, Ronak like talked about how there was some form of an, an understanding of where you might be, uh, in several, several years down the road. I feel like sometimes at corporate, it made me personally a little bit nervous that like, I didn't know if I could really climb the ladder. Um, I didn't know like where that next thing I could grab on while well, I kind of feel comfortable. And this is just me being, uh, prone to, avoiding risk. I know I can be promoted um, subsequently after certain time periods, and that gives me some form of comfort and something that attracted me to my firm. One thing important not to sugarcoat is consulting is a high burnout field, um, and that's okay. That's just kind of the nature of what it is, and it's hard just like on your mental health, like your relationships with people to be traveling all the time, especially if that is something that is required for your job. So looking into corporate, you might find a project that you really liked, um, that, like that was mentioned earlier, and maybe you want to go work for that specific corporate job later um, because you so enjoyed that company culture, those people, whatever problems they were having, and now you already have a little bit of previous experience with them and the foot in the door that it makes it a little bit easier to make that transition. But it, it is a hard, hard job. So some people will take that time off. Some people will continue in consulting, and that's who gets promoted a lot of the time. But um, there's no shame, like at all, in finding something else you really like and in, in switching in your career path, you know, doing what's best for you. Yeah, um, I can't speak to how consulting will change after COVID, but the reality is that, like, you know, it, you may be attracted to it, but nobody wants to live in a hotel room for five years on end. It's just not the reality or five years, you know, 20 years plus if you're a career person. So at least I can say that, like, working in corporate strategy, the general vibe was that we got banking level pay, but like normal hours, like for example, I mean, I guess I can say this because I don't work there anymore. My boss, who was the equivalent of like a, like a vice president, I think he made about like 350 to 500, but he only worked like 50 to 60 hours a week. So like, you know, to give you an example of what you can make, you know, if you, you know, were to go into investment banking, you know, you're going to work a hundred hours a week, but you might get to a point as vice president where you're making you know, three, 400,000. But that's just, if you know, if you want to have any kind of life, you're going to want to go work for a company and do corporate development, corporate strategy, you know, any you know, corporate finance, whatever, whatever you can go do. And just from a banking perspective, 
And then, um, yeah, because you're just, you just can't live in a hotel room. It's really just not viable. I mean, you may think it's viable, but like the minute you meet someone or you have a kid, you're doing anything in your life like that's worth doing, you know, you're not going to want to live in a hotel. So. All right. Well, that is all the time we have. Um, I really want to thank all of the panelists. Um, I'm going to send the panelists emails in the chat. Does anybody not want their email sent in the chat for any reason? Just say now. Perfect. Okay. Uh, if you guys would like to reach out, uh, I think everyone would be more than happy to speak with you. So these are the emails. I hope that everybody's is right. If someone's is spelled wrong, let me know. But um, take a picture of it. Other than that, I really want to thank all the panelists again. You guys were fantastic. And um, I'm looking forward to speaking with all of you soon. So um, thank you guys. And I hope you have a great night.